Hello everyone, my name is Abimbola Kiyomi Iliokoya on Now That You Are Married. We'll be looking at a very important topic that is generally taken to be one of the reasons why we have divorces and separations in marriages. It is called sex. We want to look at sex in marriage. The definition of sex that can make us to understand our stand on this matter is simply put as a marital act exercised by couples in order to demonstrate their love towards each other. It's one good way of expressing your love towards each other. And it is actually a conjugal obligation. You owe your spouse the act of sex. Now you might be wondering, okay, what's sex all about? The essence of marriage itself, that's it. A lot of people, mix, they mix it up. Some say, okay, sex is just to have children. That's not true. The first purpose for it is for intimacy, is for unity, is for enjoyment, is for pleasure, is for you to explore each other and get to understand each other the better. That's one major purpose of sex and marriage. Number two, then you can come to procreation. You want to have children that will bear your name. Do you know there are some people that don't even want children? All they want is to just enjoy their marriage, and then that's it. So it's also for procreation, for you to have children that will be named after you when you eventually leave. And then it is also for the purpose of serving your spouse. You owe your spouse a duty of sex in your marriage. And then it's also to protect against immorality so that a man will not have multiple uh, partners in sex. So marriage, it gives you a forum. It gives you an environment that makes it legal, that makes it unshameful, that makes it good, even in the eyes of God. So sex is a very important aspect in marriage. No sex, no marriage. Let no man deceive you. A lot of people have different views about it. Some see it as being sinful. Some see it as being um, not of necessity. But I want to tell you that it is. A family or a couple that have good sexual life are most likely going to stay together. We have defined sex as a mutual way of expressing love between couples. Then there should be a way sex should come. It should not be a hit and run thing. It should not be a rape. It must be something that will be planned, that you will prepare for it so that you can enjoy it. If you don't pre-plan for it, it becomes something else. So you must be able to pay attention to your couple, know when passes are made, when is, uh, you are being given signs in preparation for eventual happening of sex. And then I'd like to quickly say this. For both parties, you should stop giving excuses. There should be no excuse about it because it's not a sin. So you shouldn't look at it as if um, uh, today is headache, tomorrow I'm not feeling too good, the next day I don't feel like it. That is what I tend to be excuses. So there should be no excuse at all whatsoever for it. I'd like to say this very quickly to the husbands. Number one, be patient with your wife. Deal with her with utmost care and love. Don't cuddle your wife just when you want to have sex with her so that she doesn't begin to see herself as a sex machine or as a prostitute because that's what is done. When you want, when, when you want to go to a prostitute, you pay and then, if, if, okay, even if it's not a legal one, you go with gifts just because of what you have in mind. So your wife must be able to settle down into an environment of love. Treat her with love. Treat her with respect. And then, may I also say this? Um, in the process, don't see it as all about yourself because your wife is also involved. So you must guide against premature ejaculation. There is nothing that switches off a woman more than that. 
it's all about you, all right, then it's over. Because of the way God has made you, there are some things you can't control. The, the system of a man is like that of a gas cooker. You strike the, the, the light and then it comes up and then the next minute you switch it off and it goes out completely. But for a woman, she is more like a hot plate. It takes time to come up and then it takes time to go down. So you must be able to carry her along so that it, become, it does not become uninteresting to your wife. Then to the wife, I want to say this, that you must maintain the right attitude. The right attitude is very, don't begin to snap just because you see your husband making advances or preparing your mind that this night is going to be blue, it's going to be black and white. But already you're switching up, you're, you're snapping at every excuse. You want to pick up a quarry, you want to do something that will at least keep him off your back. I think you should begin to talk about it. This is an aspect of it I'm not enjoying. This is an aspect I don't so much like. So that it can change. So that both of you can move together and enjoy it. You must be able to respond to his move. That's why you are his wife. A lot of women have actually pushed out their husbands because of this attitude. Because they are not ready to change. Because they feel it is only when they are ready that the husband should come. In fact, I had a case of a woman that will only allow her husband freely only when the children are old enough to have siblings. What a ridiculous thing. If you are in that category, then it's time for you to change. Hygiene is also very important on the part of a woman. You have to be hygienic. A dirty person can never be attractive to the husband. You may not like what I'm saying, but I'm telling you the truth. I've seen, in fact, in this age and time of weeks, I know a lady that has not done her hair for close to two years because she has different kind of wigs. Do you sleep with your wigs? Won't you take it off? When was the last time you washed your hair? Then it means that you are, you'll be emitting a smell that your husband may not like. Fine, you look well when you're properly made up and then the wig is on and you're going out. Please and please, even if you still want to use your wig, make sure you wash your hair regularly and then you, you plait it. Even if you don't want to do anything, make sure you plait it so that you don't look unattractive. Don't forget you are not married to an angel. When he gets to his office, you might find a, a colleague that has been making passes at him, standing all out with mini and micro skirts, and you are there, behaving like a witch. Sorry, pardon my language, not a witch. But when you leave your house, and you with a woman that is yet to be dressed, and before you return, she has undressed again with a wrap around her chest. She's holding frying pan in one corner and cane on the other hand. What would you, would you call such a woman? You must be neat and tidy. Be inviting. Make sure you yourself, you are prepared. In fact, it is a no for any woman to tie wrapper around her chest at home. For no reason should you do that. Get nighties. Get shorts and tops that you'll be comfortable in. So that even when your husband, after holding himself, saying, okay, I'm married, I don't want to look at other women. When he gets home, you should be inviting to him. You, sh you should be irresistible to him. Don't be boring. You don't have to wait until your husband makes the pass before you initiate. You initiate it. You are in this together. It is not a sin for a wife to initiate sex with her husband. So it shouldn't be him coming all the time. Then be, be, be creative. Look for other things to do to make it interesting to him. Do you know if you don't, if you don't do that, there are cheap women out there that are ready to take him away from you. When you begin to notice that your husband is not even making an advance to his wife, a week, two weeks, one month, ah, then there's a problem coming. You must begin to retrace your steps. If he does not make the advance, make the advance, yo, so that all the pepperosi outside will not snatch him away. I also like to talk about this. We have many wrong uses of sex. Number one, sex should not be used as a bait. That is, Making your spouse do something that he or she will naturally not do. That's a bit. You just do this and then you have this. That is a wrong use of sex. Sex should not be used as a reward. That is when you do this for me, then I'll reward you. Oh, he just bought you a dress. Ah, thank you, darling. You asked him to get you something. He has gotten it. You're not saying, no, thank you. And you want to reward him. No, that's a wrong use. Then sex should not be used as punishment. Hmm. That one is another serious one. A lot of couples will stay up their spouse just because 
that spouse did something wrong and you think you're punishing you're punishing your spouse i watched the movie of course it's just a movie but you know all of those things they show actually things that happen in homes the woman was neglected the husband was ever busy with his work so he came home one day i met a stranger in his bed at the end of the day the woman went with the stranger because that stranger was giving her what the husband was not giving her you must not leave room for that it should not be seen as a punishment don't say your husband didn't do you well, he didn't get you what you wanted, he annoyed you or your wife did something, and then the next thing is, don't touch me, don't touch me. That's the wrong use of sex. And then giving room for unfaithfulness, going into extramarital affairs is a wrong use. You can't say, okay, because of what you have done, that's it, then I think I should get my satisfaction outside. You have no excuse to go out. There is nothing you need out there if you have enough within your house. Now that you know, you should be able to do something about it. Don't drive your spouse out of your home. Don't allow your spouse to have a taste of something else outside because it might take a longer time for you to get him or her back. And that's why you need to give it your best. Don't let anybody deceive you that uh, as you're growing or it's not, it's not me. Some people will even tell you it's neighbor. It's a bar in marriage. In fact, it's all the good food that you can think of. Because that's what you need to get. Intimacy. It's the peak of intimacy between a man and his wife. The place of sex in marriage can never be overemphasized. So I want to encourage you. Begin to, whatsoever you think is going wrong, about it talk about it analyze it think of different things you can do to pep it up some have even said okay they even watch some movies just to put themselves in the mood whatsoever you can do to get in the mood begin to do it and i want to assure you when your sexual life is improved you're most likely going to have a stable home for questions comments and inquiry you can get across to me on the media displayed on your screen right now. I'm waiting to hear your question. I'm waiting to listen to your comment. Honestly, all you need is determination. All you need is to just make up your mind that whatever it takes, now that I'm married, I'm going to remain married. Thank you for your time. I remain Abimbola Kiyomi Ili Okoya, now that you are married. <laughs>